You're moving to New Hampshire, right? Well, then you'll want a free state realtor who's been here fighting for your freedom for years. Privacy, low taxes, <laughs> shooting and growing food on property where you want to be left alone. The folks at PorcupineRealEstate.com understand these needs. They have a good feel for urban New Hampshire, too. Check them out. PorcupineRealEstate.com FreeTalkLive.com has a list of what it calls Move Here Projects. A bunch of mostly failed experiments in getting libertarians to concentrate in one place. From the chronically invisible Free State Wyoming to the pompous Christian baiting Blue Ridge Liberty Endeavor. I actually don't know for sure what that one's called. I guess it's supposed to be in Asheville in one of the Carolinas. I forget which. And that's exactly what history is going to be doing to almost all of these what were you thinking also rants. But there is one that I have a soft spot for. I'm not even sure it has a name, so we'll just call it the move to Detroit idea. I like the idea for its diversity. Yes, of course, there is the ethnic diversity that we lack in New Hampshire. But I'm talking about diversity of choice, diversity of situation. This idea is about as different from the Free State New Hampshire idea as a liberty moving idea can be. With the exception of climate, Detroit has almost nothing in common with New Hampshire. It's a buy low proposition, whereas New Hampshire was always about reinforcing success. The type of liberty wind that is starting to blow in Detroit is almost completely different from the type that's going on in New Hampshire. It seems like it's more about alternate forms of security, dollar an acre real estate prices, and fixing the problems by moving toward them rather than running from them. The most accurate predictions are often the ones that you fail to record for posterity at the time. And I made that mistake back around 2011 when I apparently failed to articulate any of my thoughts about Detroit. At that time, I sort of took it for granted that Detroit might be one of the places where freedom reemerges first in the U.S. It's like a basketball bouncing. The, the, the earlier the basketball, or the, the first basketball to hit the floor is going to be the first one to reach its tall bounce point. For the last few years, we keep seeing, you know, all these Facebook memes of urban desolation there. But I think what's going to start happening is those memes are going to be replaced by a recurring theme of De Detroit recovery. Now, that may not happen until after a general collapse. It could be years, but at some point, it's just like the uh, viral videos of cops being good, right? That didn't used to be considered newsworthy for a cop to behave well. But as the uh, conventional wisdom, wisdom becomes more and more entrenched that cops are the bad guys, well, eventually it'll start to turn around and there'll be a trend. And people will document this trend with Facebook memes. Here's the latest picture of, you know, uh, a cop being great. Or a business that, uh, that had incredible profits because it bought some, some land so cheaply. My thinking back around 2011 was more like, uh, well, you know, here's what I think will happen. I thought I thought what would happen is basically sooner or later someone would probably put together a group of people who buys a certain amount of land, and together they defend it. Because there's no reason you can't be relatively safe in Detroit if you live in a house that meets certain security requirements or on the property that, that meets that, and you know the people around you, you're all armed. Actually, Detroit has a fair amount of gun freedom. I believe all of us New Hampshire folk who wanted to could simply go to Detroit anytime you wanted and carry concealed, as long as we have a New Hampshire license. That's the way it is last I looked into it a few years ago. My thinking would be what you'd want to do is make some sort of a deal with the city and maybe the state, if you're moving in there, that says you'll pay them a certain amount of money at a certain time in the future if you're left alone for the first three years or something like that. There would probably have to be some sort of special deal 
to justify such a move to such a place. But the authorities are in a pretty desperate position right now. As authoritarian as they may be, they're the ones with the most motive to work with you. It could be a little bit like the situation in Hong Kong when China took over. They were, you know, raving authoritarians, but the numbers and the possession of enough, enough wisdom to read numbers led them to actually protect Hong Kong's economic freedom. It was good for them. Of course, my idea sort of could open up a can of worms in the certain sense that people who already live there would feel like they're being treated unfairly in comparison to these folks who are just swooping in from outside. That would have to be addressed up front. My brainstorm would be that the, uh, the, the Detroit Free Staters, if you want to call them that, would, uh, as part of the agreement, agree to provide security for the immediate area around the enclave. And they probably shouldn't make it too much of an enclave. This might be a nice job for liberty-leaning returning veterans. I'll be watching to see how this kind of situation in Detroit plays out. Nice to see another free state-ish movement that's finally worth talking about. Maybe I should rephrase that. Finally, the existence of such a movement that's worth talking about. This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by PorcupineRealEstate.com.